Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your premier source for Second Amendment news. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's episode here. And we're going right to the heart of the matter, to Washington, D.C., the heart of most problems in the nation when it comes to the Second Amendment. Uh, if you're not familiar with Washington, D.C., it's a very small area. And if you don't live there, you might not know that there's only one FFL in Washington, D.C. proper, right inside the limits of the district. Uh, and that changed. So there was one guy whose name was Charles Sykes. And the way it worked up until March 14th last month, uh, you would have to buy a gun from a, a different uh, area, wherever, whether you lived in the Virginia area closest to D.C. or the Maryland area. And you would have to ship it to the Sykes guy, who was the only FFL in D.C., and he would charge you $125 to transfer it to you because he was the only game in town. I don't know about you, but here in Massachusetts, the transfer cost runs from about 20 to 40 bucks, uh, somewhere in there. So $125 is, to me, I mean, obscene. I don't know about any other state or what the costs are, but I think $40 is way too much money. And I know several FFLs and, and some of my friends charge that, that amount. And I'm not telling them how they run their business, but for 40 bucks, when some people do it for 10 or 15 or 20 is to me overpriced can you imagine 125 bucks but that was the case in washington dc for quite a long time like i said up until march 14th 2020 that's when sykes who had moved his operation into the headquarters of washington dc metro police department uh stopped his operation because in his words and i'll quote too many people coming in every day to continue operations too many people want their freedom. So we're going to shut down. Yeah. Now, Sykes never said why he shut down or why too many people were coming in. Was it because of uh, COVID-19? Was it just the average uh, amount of business has been on the uptick? If you look at the stats every single month, more and more people are exercising their, their rights here. Nobody, he hasn't really said. However, everybody took notice and a couple day, within a couple days of him shutting down his operations, the DC Metro PD said, oh, we have to do something. And listen to the quote from the mayor, um, Muriel Browser. Uh, this was from a Monday's press conference. And the, the mayor said that uh, they had to work on alternatives so that they wouldn't run into any constitutional issues or open ourselves up to meddling in our gun laws from outside groups. The solution that we came up with was to delegate the Metropolitan Police Department the authority to operate as the district's FFL while there are no other commercial alternatives. And once there is a viable commercial alternative license to operate in the District of Columbia, the Metropolitan Police Department will no longer need to serve this role. Since when does a mayor sprinkle pixie dust on a police department and render them a federally firearms licensed dealer. What? This is what's become of this nation because of this fear that the, uh, the you know the, the the powerful politicians have bestowed upon the sheeple. Now we can just say uh, you you're an FFL, you you're an FFL, but the you little citizens who want to do it, there's all kinds of hoops you have to jump through, both state level and federal level, and pay us all kinds of money, and then we'll let you do this. This is absolutely insane, but. Uh, they had to do something because if you lived in D.C., you could no longer purchase a gun. And they've been sued big time. See, circa 2008 it was a major federal uh, Supreme Court decision against Washington, D.C. And you might have heard of it. It was D.C. versus Heller. So since this Sykes guy didn't want to do any more business because it was getting too busy for him, even though he was raping people for $125 to transfer just to process some paperwork, uh, the PD is taking over. And how this is going to work now from the MPD, in case you live there, uh, they, their quote was this, As always, D.C. residents can go to another state, for example, Virginia or Maryland, and purchase long guns, rifles, and shotguns. The dealer will hold the firearm until MPD approves and registers the firearm. Now they have to approve it. Hmm, that doesn't sound like, I don't think I remember seeing that in the Second Amendment. Uh, but there are several police departments who think they have that power. There are several states that believe they have that power too. But anyway, it continues. Once it is registered, then the DC resident can go pick up the firearm from the dealer. So they're not even gonna have the guns shipped to the PD. You're gonna buy it from wherever. You gotta wait for the, for the, you know, for the police department to okay it and register it. And then you can go pick it up uh, from wherever you got it. 
I wonder if they were setting people up for violations of like carrying outside of limits or something like that. I don't know, sounds like they would do that. I just figured I'd let you guys know what's going on in Washington, D.C. and how the mayor believes that they can just say, you, the police department, are now an FFL and you shall do thine bidding. It's just amazing what's coming down uh, the last month and a half. And what the concerning part for me is, and <sighs> this is a warning, this is going to piss some people off. Donald Trump in his uh, address Saturday called out Northam, Governor Northam in Virginia, and how he's trying to strip the Second Amendment. And the stuff the president said was spot on. However, what is he doing, if anything, to stop it? Um, he could end it. He could he could do a big part in it. Um, but it's easy to tweet stuff out. But let's see him do something about it. I know Barr, his attorney general, is anti-gun, and we already know that Trump has backed some stuff that he shouldn't have originally, and though he has backed off of it, it just you know, it just bugs me the fact that he'll you know sit from afar and say, "Oh, look at what Northam's doing. You need to liberate Virginia," but he's not doing anything on the federal side. But it is what it is, and I guess it's up to us, right? All along, it's been up to us, we the people. Let me see what you guys and gals think should be going on right now. I think I know the answer, but leave it down below. I hope you are all having a fantastic day. If you enjoy the news here on the Second Amendment, help this channel by smashing the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon next to it and maybe share this with a couple 900 of your friends. Until we see each other again, I am Jared, the host of Guns and Gadgets. Be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a weapon. Take care, everybody.